performed on TV, film, stage actor, directed also, yes, too. Yes. And uh, for more than 20 years, now, guess what? He's an established bass player in his own band, and I love what you say about that. It's more than that people are surprised you're in, in music now. They're surprised that... That we're good. You're so good. <laughs> okay. Well, you know, there, there's the, the stigma attached to, uh, you know, m musicians wanting to be actors, actors wanting to be That's recording true. artists. So I think when you hear of an actor, you know, having a band, it's kind of like, oh, okay. <laughs> but then the fact that it's actually a good band, like, that, that's the thing I'm most proud of. And then you've got gigs all over the place now, and you sell out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we play a lot of jazz festivals as well. Uh -huh. Just came off this wonderful uh, Tom Joyner Caribbean cruise. We played yeah. a couple of nights. Uh, and the music is just, it, it's a wonderful way. Um, it's a, a way I get to express myself in, in a way that I cannot necessarily do as an actor or as a director. Right. So it's, it's, it's something that started out as a hobby that has become a, a, a third career now. The other stereotype that you had to deal with, too, is so often child actors grow up to have such terribly troubled lives. Sure, sure. So do you feel like the fact that you, you, know, you found directing, you found other kinds of acting, but you also found music, did yes. that make a difference in keeping you from fil fulfilling that stereotype? It was, it was more so understanding the concept of longevity. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and my mother was, was, was very, uh, it was very important for her to impress upon me the importance of longevity. So during uh, the, even the height of the Cosby show, mm -hmm. my uh, focus had always been after Cosby. So I literally grew up with, with almost a maniacal obsession yeah with life after Cosby. Knowing this is going to end one of these yes, days, Yeah, right? I mean, and it was wonderful for my career, and it was a wonderful catalyst, but I never looked at it as the end-all, be-all of my career. Okay. I knew that I had to move on. You know, at some point, this ride was going to be over, and what was I going to do when this show was over? While you were doing the show, though, when did you become aware of what an important show that was and how it changed people's perspectives and the kind of groundbreaking show it was? We kind of figured that out uh, kind of early, early on, on. because. All of the, you know, all of the, the only thing that the critics could say about the show was that the show was not realistic because black people did not live like that. So it was important, uh, you know, for us to, to understand from the very beginning the impact that that show yeah. had on black America and white America right. alike. Changing that image. Too. Yes, yes. So how much of Theo is still in you? Um, if you ask me, I'll say none. <laughs> Even <laughs> yeah. back then, if you asked me, I'd say there Theo. There was no Malcolm Theo in yeah, you, huh? Yeah. But, um, I mean, a, a, a lot of Theo, you know, of course came from writers, but a lot of it came from me as well. I think a lot of the characters, sure. uh, even though they were based on, some of them were based on Mr. Cosby's actual children, yes. the characters themselves, you know, kind of tailored around what we brought okay, to the so table. Okay, so there's a lot of Malcolm and Theo, all right? Yeah. 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 <laughs> all right, you like that better. <laughs> so if you would like to meet Malcolm Jamal Warner, you can. This Sunday, yes. he's here in town. He's going to be speaking, inspirational speaking, too. And he'll be great to listen to. He'll be at the Christ Universal Temple. It's at 10.30 in the morning Sunday. And also, we'll have more details about his long career, the longevity, mm -hmm. as well as his band. Yes. And he has some 